Steve Barton's welcome. Um, are you the official club photographer? Is that your title on the business card? Oh, I think that's fair to say, yes. Uh, through Getty Images, of course, who are partners with Harlequins providing their visual content. So this isn't the only gig you do, but it's the best one? It's right up there, I would say, yeah. It's uh, photographing rugby, which is not a bad thing to do uh, for a job. Uh, so yeah, very enjoyable. Now we're lucky enough to have Steve for two parts today. Half time, we're going to be going through some of his favorite images. But uh, before that, let's talk about rugby photography in general, because everyone who's watching this will have seen at least one of your images and they sort of leave a lasting impression with everyone. You're almost creating like a tapestry, like a legacy, aren't wow. you? Wow, that's, yeah, well, that's making it sound uh, very epic. Um, <laughs> Basically, what we're trying to do is uh, tell the story of the day, match-wise, um, and we're also providing content for the club for commercial partners, um, for management as well. Uh, we often get people asking for pictures of things like scrummages and that sort of thing. So it's um, it's grown as well in terms of what it encompasses in the club. Uh, the photography is used a lot more, so you'll see a lot more pictures around the outside of the ground, in the dressing rooms, uh, changing room areas. So it's become quite an important part of the club, really. Um, all the boxes that you see, which are obviously aren't being used at the moment, but there's a lot of imagery is being used everywhere around the clubs, which is a great thing, really, because it wasn't always like that. Where's the most interesting place you've seen one of your images? Oh, that's very hard to say. Well, I think one that took me aback was a picture of Mike Brown right outside the uh, away dressing room, which was enormous, him shouting. So <laughs> if you were leaving the dressing room, you certainly knew you were at the stoop. Um, that was quite an interesting place to see a picture used, I'd say, yeah. Well, if you've got one of him smiling, let me know, because I think <laughs> well, that'd go for a fortune. We, we might see one of those later on, actually, so we might be in luck. Do you ever think when you take a photo, I mean, I'm sure you know straight away whether it's a great one or not, but do you think about the, the impact that's going to have or, or where it might end up or how far down the line people might still be admiring that work or is it more about the, the here and the now? Well photography obviously uh, press work which is a lot of what we do is very instantaneous so it's about uh, either getting the try or the try celebration or a goal or a goal celebration and getting it out online very quickly uh, but I'm very conscious that working here to, you know, with a club which has got 150 years plus of history you're also documenting the club so it's about um, making sure you get get as many pictures of those players that play in the courses as you can, even if they play maybe once or twice. Um, I think it's quite important that this, you sort of keep up the historical element of the club. So I'm quite conscious of that, actually. There is some responsibility, I think, attached to it to do that. Full disclosure, I always get a telling off for this because we meet these fascinating uh -huh. people. We think, we'll do a couple of minutes on this, but then I ask more questions and it overruns, but hopefully you're enjoying it. I certainly am because you mentioned how instantaneous it is now. Mm. You take a photo, it seems mm. to appear online almost instantly, but that hasn't always been the case. And you've been involved for a little while. Can you just quickly talk to me about the film days? Because I really glamorize that sort of old fashioned yeah. approach well, to it. Uh, well, 20 years ago, which makes me sound quite old, I mean, we were shooting film still. I think really the digital takeover or changeover for me didn't really happen to 2003. Um, huge difference. I mean, now the camera is connected via a, a wireless system so we can send the picture direct from the pitch side to Ali who's sat up in the press seats and he can get it onto Twitter within you know a couple of minutes of the moment happening. Uh, film days, I mean, you're given a bag of film, uh, you go to the game, uh, you shoot the film and you'd have to get it Devved and printed or scanned in. Um, so we would we'd actually dev film at stadiums. So you'd do it in the toilets if there was no wiring facility. Um, you would then make prints and drive them around Fleet Street, dropping them off in the early hours of you know Sunday morning. Uh, so it's a very very different world. Um, yeah, it sounds romantic, but I can remember it being quite uh, messy, uh, labour-intensive, stressful. Um, but I guess the joy of it was you, you, you dev a roll of film and you look at it and you see, you know, that's the first time you saw it, is when you looked at it under a loop. So you think, wow, look, there's a picture. That's the picture we're going to send out. So I think there's probably less choice for uh, outlets to look at. But, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, well, I'm glad I went through it, I have to say. Yeah, it was... Uh, things seem a lot easier now. Did you ever have one of those days where you thought, oh, I'm not sure if I've got a usable photo today? Um, well, being a professional photographer, obviously, that, 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 that sort of thing wouldn't happen. But I think that there's a stress level attached to it of... Um, 
you know, have I got that moment? And I think there's a lot of things that happen during a match. Um, there's a lot, there's some luck attached to it. I would say, you know, a, a player could score a try behind the posts and you might have a bad angle. You can't see their face. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to say I don't want to see a lot of tries, but pushover tries are notoriously bad for who's actually scored it. Oh, You've got a pile of bodies. See, so, we've got, we can relate there because sometimes yeah. when I'm commentating, I'll, I'll just make a lot of noises and hope that the wrong name doesn't creep out of my mouth. It's a nightmare, isn't it? It is. And I think that's, um, and, and the game has changed as well. I would argue now that compared to 20 odd years ago, defences are better. So there's less line breaks. There's less opportunity to get players running in open play with the ball. Uh, defences are so much better that the, the time you've got from the point the player gets the ball and runs with it to the time that they're tackled is very short. So in an ideal world, I'd like, you know, pictures of players all running with head up so you can see their face. So that has more um, usefulness long term. But that doesn't happen so much. So particularly in the forward, I mean, there's a lot of players out there who are doing a lot of hard work who always make, might complain, so oh, I never see any pictures of me. And that's because you don't really get to see their faces as much as you'd like. Nothing to do with their work rate. I just like to make that clear. <laughs> We're not throwing anyone under the bus. Um, I can see this, uh, the photography chronicles becoming like the grass chronicles and going on <laughs> and on because I could chat to you all day.